Can you, can you hear that? Can you rather not hear that? Can you not hear the sirens and the people screaming on the street and the garbage trucks? We're in the country this week, and by country, I mean Connecticut, but that's country enough for me right now because it's not New York City. I love you, New York, but sometimes you just need to like go to bed without your dinner. You know I don't go anywhere without my sewing supplies, right? I mean, I don't. However, I did come here with only one cut of fabric. It was that white fabric with the roses you guys saw in my um, garment district shopping trip. Don't get me wrong, I love that fabric, but I wanted something wax printy colorful to play with because it's my birthday in like three days in like three days so um it has not been opened it's gonna be open right now on camera let's see if the technicolor that i saw on screen matches the technicolor that is in this package <laughs> And, all right, we need to open these up. This first print is gonna be a little, um, a little docile in terms of me. Oh, but the repeat is so pretty. A cool thing about wax print is once you open it up, you might find a completely different repeat than what you expected, but with this one, it's just all gonna be this repeat, I'm pretty sure. We'll open it up in a minute so you can see. Here's something to know about wax print. When you receive it, it's usually in a six yard cut and it usually has a lot of stickers on it to keep it together, wrapped up nicely, also to um, prove to you that it is what it says it is because there's a lot of wax print out there that are knockoffs. That said, let me talk about knockoffs for a minute. Pause for reflection. I get asked by a lot of people, a lot of sewists, if wax print is something that they are allowed to use and wear and sew with without feeling that they are committing the crime of cultural appropriation. Here's what I think about that. Wax print actually originated in Holland. It was created by a Dutch entrepreneur who wanted to knock off Indonesian batik, okay? It didn't work out because the new process that he was using, which was a time-saving process, did not produce the beautiful effects that Indonesia was used to in batik. It did, however, produce this really cool new effect. And when trade routes brought it to Africa, when, you know, those entrepreneurs decided, well, we gotta find a market for it, Africa loved it the saturated colors and the vibrant prints. And thank God they loved it because can you imagine just not having this in your life? And now today, that fabric that was originally intended to be a knockoff is produced in Africa, it's produced in Holland, it's produced in China, and many people will say, well, if it's produced in China, it's a knockoff. Yeah, but it was originally intended as a knockoff in the first place, so. Wah, wah. I say, if you'll want to wear it, wear it. And especially if you're a sewist and you're creating a garment out of it, like who better to create something out of fabric and really appreciate the fabric and love the fabric and adore the fabric than a sewist, right? We fondle fabric all day long, don't we? TLDR, Mixed Chick Party of One says, buy that fabric. And I'm pretty sure the vendors who sell this fabric support me in that oh it's a it's a backup of a truck can you hear it that's like maybe the first like car type noise that's not just quietly rolling down the pavement that i've heard since we've been here and it's gone <gasps> she's gonna be so pretty what 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 I might just, I might just have to wear both of these for the rest of the, the video, the chat. I'll give you a little, a little few more tidbits about wax print. One of the great things about wax print is that it is double 
sided. Even this print, which is metallic, you can see it has a slight sheen on that silvery white part right there. On the reverse, it doesn't have that same sheen, but it's still super saturated on the reverse side. Same goes for this print. Both sides on this one completely usable because there's no metallic addition to this print right here. But don't they go really well together? These fabrics come in a six yard cut, which means you get six continuous yards to play with. That is a lot of fabric, but you should also know that the width is only 45 inches. You quilters out there are used to a 45 inch wide quilting cotton, and this is not news to you, but many sewists are used to fabrics that are like 54 to 60 inches wide, and you just have, you know, fabric to swim around in. You obviously still have fabric to swim around in with this stuff, but you might need to be a little more economical with your cutting. I can actually get two garments out of one of these cuts because I'm a shawty. That's an advantage of being a, a shawty right there. I got a pink maxi dress and pink shorts out of last year's birthday fabric um, that's right here and right here. And I do think that for one of these cuts, Rob will be getting a matching pair of shorts. And as it is my birthday this weekend, oh, we gonna wear matching outfits. He's out just tending the chickens right now and like pulling things out of the ground from the garden to cook for dinner. Dinners have been amazing. So he doesn't know that that's what he's in for. It's my birthday week. What? Yeah. A lot of people ask me how to care for their wax print once they get it. I normally don't wash my fabric before I stitch with it. Be it wax print or be it cotton, linen, rayon, whatever. I actually follow the ready to wear method of stitching it up before I wash it. That said, I also, once I've stitched up a garment, only wash my garments on cold and tumble dry low. So I'm not getting a lot of shrinkage out of my garments once I have stitched them up. And with wax print, if you leave the wax in, you see how that just, that just stays up. It just keeps the loft, right? So if you wanna create some sort of fancy structured gown or a shoulder detail of some sort of pleated ruffle, it's going to stand up on its own if you don't wash the wax out of it. After you're done sewing, it's gonna to have to be a dry clean only garment, I meaning you're never gonna be able to throw it in the wash if you wanna keep that wax in it. If you want it softer, if you want a more um, everyday feeling cotton, then do wash it. Wash it before you stitch it up. I wash all my clothes and my fabrics with Tide Tide detergent, not sponsored, but probably should be because it's the best. It just works the best. Before you wash this fabric, before you start sewing it up, you do have to remove the labels, which is easier than you think. Now, oddly, these two cuts did not come with the normal amount of labels that I see on wax print fabrics. Could mean any number of things. It could mean that the seller removed the labels for me before sending it off. I'm not too worried about it because I'm in love with this fabric. If your wax print shows up with a big square label, which it usually does, these little sticky labels and big square labels that show up on most cuts of wax print, you're just going to there's a label on your wax print, don't just peel it off because that's gonna leave a wax residue on your fabric. Take a paper towel and place that on top of the sticker. Take your steam iron, hit it with some steam for a good 30 seconds to a minute. This action I'm doing is me steaming with an iron. That's what's happening right there. Just steaming it away with an iron. Remove the paper towel and then carefully, because the steam will melt the glue, peel the sticker off of the fabric. And then you can go to Sewy Town. Planning out a garment for wax print is um, sometimes a little forethought goes a long way in the end product. It's very easy to get um, 
an arrow pointing at your reproductive organs or a flower just sort of blooming out of your flower. Now me, I'm not that worried about that. Um, I don't really think it's such a big deal. We've got reproductive organs. They're there. It's really no secret. So I don't really care if I highlight one of them, but you might want to take a really good look at your fabric before you put your pattern down on the fabric and cut it out. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about wax print at the moment. I have got some sewing to do if I'm gonna get this matching outfit sewn up by my birthday weekend. I'm really glad that Rob is not in earshot right now. Hit me up in the comment section with any questions you might have about wax print. And please, please also tell me in the comments, which of these do you think I'm about to make shorts out of for Rob? I don't know if that was just English, but you know what I mean. Like, which of these do you think Rob should be wearing as shorts? Huh? Huh? Maybe half and half? I don't think he could deal with half and half. Please don't say half and half. He can't deal with that. All right, y'all. Peace out. Emphasis on peace. I gotta go get sewing. Bye.